is the same as it was before. But if we flip on over to, oh, I'm sorry, in portrait mode is like it is before. If we flip on over to landscape, what we can do is we can click on one of these and we get right next to it the web page there. So it's very similar to like how a lot of emails work. You know, you see your email and if you click on there, you can preview the email. So again, pretty good functionality. But that's just in... Uh, that's just in landscape mode. The thought being is that there's more space for it um, in, in landscape mode. And we did that by having our resource qualifier layout dash land. So if you remember, we explored that in some detail, not in exhaustive detail, but in some detail before all the different kinds of um, um, resource qualifiers you can put on that, you know, whether it be a different language for strings or uh, different images for density uh, or different images for screen size. Um, that would may, maybe be another way to approach this. Um, this is simply doing it for landscape versus portrait. We could put in a qualifier maybe if it's a large screen and it's in landscape, do that. So maybe a phone like this, a smaller screen, still worked as, as it did before. The other tut list, yeah, the other tut list, just as a first fragment. All right. Whereas this one has a linear layout with two fragments inside it. This guy can get by with having just a fragment in it because, keep in mind, each uh, XML file can only have a root node. So I couldn't just have two fragments next to each other in the other X file. I have to wrap the XML file. I have to wrap them in a root node. So uh, they use a table layout for that. The, yeah, this one? Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that is just nothing fancy there because, again, um, that is the view for this guy. So that doesn't actually reference the fragment anyway? Um, no. No. Because this, yeah, this just uh, references the, um, doesn't really need to. Um, right, because it can just use that. It, 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 I suppose it could. We could have built it using um, the fragment, but they didn't. I actually thought they did, but now that you mention it, yeah, they, they did not. All right, let's look at some of this code. And let's start by looking at the tut list activity. All right, we do our normal things. All right, that we do. Then notice what we do. We have an if statement here that looks to see which mode we are in. Actually, that's, that's a slight mis... I guess I have to define what I mean by which mode we're in. It looks to see if, the, if we're in this mode where there are two fragments on the page or not. All right. It looks to see if this pane is available. This window pane is available. And that's what this code is doing here. Yeah. We try to find it. Right. Not to see if we're in landscape. It doesn't look to see if we're in landscape mode. And that, that's a good practice because, again, you could change the rules and you could say, I don't want it in landscape mode, but only landscape mode on a large screen or whatever. All right. But it looks to see if it can find that fragment on the page. If it can, all right. Or if it's not in the layout, in other words, it's not associated with this, then it starts that second activity. And that second activity being the one that brings up the 
detail page. All right, which is let's let's bring that one up. That one's pretty straightforward, but I don't think we've seen an example of this. All right, and what this does is. It does all the ordinary things, it, it, and, and um, the one thing it does is it's going to grab the URL that we want because we're, we pass it to it from this guy. All right, so we pass the URL or URI, rather. And then we take that, we grab that, and we set um, the, essentially the URL of that web view. So by setting the URL, we're actually we're requesting that web page and we're, we're displaying it. You can think of that, that web view as being almost like a, a little mini browser window, right? It doesn't have all the browser controls, but it is, it's, it's a, a little panel a view that you can view a web page on. So you can request a web page and pop it in there. Again, the advantage of this would be, um, as opposed to some of the solutions that we did last week, are that this could involve server-side scripting. So we could, we could request a PHP page or, or something along those lines as opposed to uh, in the examples we went over last time, we had all static uh, HTML pages. Yep. Yep. All right. Now let's look to see what happens if if not, then we uh, then we set the viewer. All right. This is what we execute if the view is not on the same activity. In other words, we don't have those two views side by side. We simply update the URL of our viewer, which is our tut viewer fragment. All right, now let's look at these two fragments. The activities are pretty straightforward. Let's spend a little bit of time looking on the fragment. First of all, let's look at the list fragment. And you'll notice that Um, where are we? Oh, we, this extends list fragment, which is a certain kind of fragment. All right. Um, this, this roughly corresponds to a list activity, all right, where we take and we can associate a list adapter, and in this case we're getting the list of things that we want to display on this page from our strings file. And rather inelegantly, it's simply coded as an array. So we pull those items out of an array. Now what would be a better way to do that, of course, because the idea of this is this is like a little app that, that goes with the accompanying website. So it's sort of an app-ish version of the website. The better way to do this would be like to get an RSS feed from this. All right. These things, for example, the items that appear on here are like recent articles or recent at the time that that was written. All right. And um, it just popped into my head. I'm working on a, a project uh, for, for a group that I do some work with and this is going to be perfect for them. So I'm going to definitely cannibalize this example uh, in that one. But at any rate, it would be better instead to get uh, a list of articles from like an RSS feed and populate it that way. And again, the mechanism would be the same. In fact, if you look at this tutorial, later on down the line, Somewhere in here, somewhere as part of this uh, 
process, they actually go and do that. They actually pull the data from... Um, Um, could be, but that was kind of the one before it. Maybe, at any rate, at some point, Oh, I don't know. If you navigate through here, at some point in here, like where I grab the code from, where's the link to grab the code? Ah, here we go. Google Code Hosting. If you look, for example, this MT list tutorial, um, about, let's see, yeah, version 6 of it, there is the, the parsing of an RSS feed. So, again, instead of having those things hard-coded in the array, it goes out, hits the web, pulls that in, parses it, and creates uh, a list adapter that way that, that goes and, uh, yeah, and, and pulls that up. Anyhow, so our list here. Again, creates a list item. How does it create the list item? Again, it sets a list adapter, and it says for each item, the list adapter is going to um, use this uh, our layout list item to effectively inflate it and create it. That's what we had saw at the beginning, the single item that's just a text field. All right, now, here's something that is distinct to um, the fragment, the unattach, all right? Because remember that a fragment has to live in an activity. A fragment can't live on its own. So it has to be attached to an activity. Now, depending on the kind of fragment it is, all right, um, it better be able to handle, um, it better be, be able to handle um, the clicking uh, of that. All right? So if we attach this to an activity that can't handle the click, then it's not going to work. So what we're doing here is we call the super and we try. On, we, we try casting this on TUT selected activity or selected listener activity. We try to cast it to an on. We, we try to cast it to uh, a TUT selected active or selected listener. What we're doing is we're seeing if whatever activity we're attaching this to implements. that interface. All right. And if we look here in the list activity, we will see that, yep, it implements that interface, which means that it has that function in it, right? No, the, the, the fragment attaches to an activity by virtue of the fact that in the XML file for the layout is defined as that fragment is part of that activity. If we look at this, all these have such similar names. It, it, uh, 
when I tried doing some of these tutorials, I like just made it real, just real short names, but it's kind of hard to see. But if we look at this guy, Yeah, that has that fragment in it. So, if we look at this, all right, we set our layout to that TUT list fragment, all right? That action attaches that and therefore the attach method on the fragment fires off to make sure that this guy is able to, to handle it. All right. Again, remember, you can attach a fragment to, to any activity, but in this case, we have to make sure that for this to work, that someone is, being, is able to handle that click event. All right. Um, and in this case, it's the bigger activity, because the bigger activity is the one that knows do I have to create another activity to display the detail, or do I simply display the detail side by side? All right. So it's the big activity where that, that smarts has to live off how to handle it, because the big activity knows what fragments are available. Uh, the fragment itself, being standalone, doesn't know what else is out there. All right. So therefore, to handle the click has to be done in, in the main activity. But that being said, where, where that's relevant is when we attach that activity or when that activity is attached, we better make sure that it implements that method. All right? That it is in fact an on TUT selected listener. All right? Because if it's not, not going to work. All right. Let's look at then the viewer fragment, which is the detail. And this is pretty straightforward. All right. It creates a web view. Or rather, it, 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 it creates the, um, the view from that layout and grabs a pointer to the viewer and then finally it has an update URL method that takes the URL that gets passed and provided that there is a viewer on there, just a nice little safety check, loads the URL into that viewer. All right. Again, getting back to this, the, the whole idea of this was the fact that with the advent of more tablets in the Android world, there's more screen to play with. And, you know, the, the old nature abhors a vacuum. You know, if there's more screen space, folks go on to do something with it. You know, I don't know as a design principle if that's a good idea or not. You know, you have to make the judgment call. But the idea is, is that you want some sort of flexibility um, for that. Questions about this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the devil's in the details, as they say. Uh, the one thing that they, they do, uh, they have, is they have a stack. So that you could actually sort of implement a back button, you know, on this page, for example. What's going on with this? If we wanted to with this application, as I'm navigating around here and I press this to view that, this to do that, and so on, I could actually push those guys on a stack, those fragments, and I could have a back button that would emulate this. 
Now see, there when I press the back button, it takes me back out of the application because that's the only the one activity. Whereas if I, uh, if I created my own little pseudo back button, what I could do is as I navigated around through these, I could press previous story, previous story, previous story, and it could hold those uh, in a stack and I could pull those back up and, and initialize, uh, reinitialize the page back to where we were before. Uh, I don't know if you can commandeer the system back button. You no, know, I think you can because uh, oh, oh. on my uh, tablet here, when I go into the browser, it's going to take me back to the browser. Really? Okay. Well, it will until you hit the very first page. Yeah. All right. Because each one it's pulling up. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a new activity. Right, right. Um, what I, uh, are any questions about this example? What I want to do is I want to download this guy. Or maybe I won't download it, but maybe we'll just talk about it. This is a nice little extension of that, and what it does is it allows you to sort of sync up your uh, machine with the server, your application. Um, one thing about a mobile app that is um, is is better than no, I, I don't want to be showing anything right this minute. One thing about a mobile app that's better than a um, uh, a mobile website is that um, you have more uh, flexibility like as far as offline processing goes. All right. So here's sort of the idea of what we're going to do. All right. What we're going to do is this list of articles that we have that we're showing and we're showing the details for. We're going to hit as soon as the, the very first time we run this application, we're going to hit and grab the RSS feed, parse it, and store it in a database. All right. So then we'll have all those articles in the database, and it doesn't matter then if we're connected to the web or not. We can. Uh, well, that's a good question. I guess it, we'll have to see what they're storing in the database. We might have to be connected to the web for part of it. But again, we don't have. To, we have, we'll have the list of articles stored in a database. Uh, then there'll be a refresh button that will go out and grab any updated stories from there. Yeah, probably just store a link. You're right. My, I was initially thinking that this would be untethered, but yeah, you're you're storing a link. All right. So let's take a look at what we're doing in this. And I would imagine behaviorally this would behave the same. So I'm I'm not going to necessarily install it. All right. But what we have again is we've created an async task for our application. All right, and the reason we're doing that async, of course, is because this potentially could take a little bit of time to connect to the web, to grab the XML file, and so on. And we don't want to have the same thread that's handling the UI handle this because then it might not be responsive and we get the dreaded application not responding, what do you want to do, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we create a um, asynchronous task to go and, and do that. Uh, let's see. What, I'm trying to see what you're looking. Private class download. Private. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right. Yeah, I see that now. Um, 
I believe you can, yeah. 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 So again, and what we're doing is we have that, that uh, to do in background and then we have the XML parse. Um, we create our database to have the table for the tutorials that will have uh, an ID that's an auto number or auto increment, the column title that can't be null, and a column URL. You're right, it'll contain a link. All right. This flips through and again, essentially, um, I have to take a look here, uh, creates a database and um, a way to go. Yeah. Now here is sort of the interesting part. This is our XML parser. Because really what an RSS feed is is simply an XML file in a certain format that contains information about um, updates to a website. All right. And what this is doing is again, it's looking for the items and it's plucking from the items the title and the link. All right. Typically, our, our RSS are very popular like with blogs or for frequently updated um, web pages. And typically with those there's like dated entries. So you're pulling the title from it and you're pulling the link from it and you're going in and you're parsing it and looping through. We then go in and add that, let's see, to, let's see, what is this doing? Tutorial data, new content value. What? Oh, it's, it's effectively adding this to the list of, of items. Then finally, we create a refresh button that um, goes and parses the RSS feed and refreshes the database. RSS feed again looks like this. This is all this is already doing some formatting. I, I kind of would like to just see the raw feed. choices of how to read it. An RSS file is going to look like this. There's going to be a channel at the top that describes sort of the whole, um, the site that it's an RSS feed for. And then there's going to be a list of items. And there can be other stuff in there as well, but at the very least it's going to have a title, a link, and a description. So. Uh, again, the nice thing about this is this code that we were looking at a minute ago for parsing that, that RSS feed, we could use that to parse any RSS feed, simply give it the, the URL of that, uh, of uh, the RSS feed.
because th again, that's, that's consistent. Um, actually, the first Android apps I wrote were simple things that took like from Facebook or from WordPress that took an RSS feed and did some playing around formatting uh, of them and, and created a web view with that, created some very basic HTML. And again, it's rudimentary to be sure, but number one, it wasn't something that was hard coded, right? It was in sync, and therefore, when the when the the, the changes were made to the server and the RSS feed got uh, updated, the next time the person visited it, um, the app they would see it. And again, it gives a, an organization a mobile presence. So. Um, It does seem kind of overkill. Um, I guess what would be good about this is, um, depending on how much was in the description, you could store, uh, it doesn't even look like they're showing the description now, but, or saving the description in the database. Pardon me? Yeah, there could be a lot of them, or um, the idea is that, um, you know, I wouldn't, you know, otherwise when, you know, if, if you didn't, let, let's imagine if you didn't store it in a database. If you didn't store it in a database, then every time you open the app, it would have to go out, ask for the, um, ask for uh, the RSS feed, and grab all those old things, all right, and reform, and recreate that every time, all right? Whereas now, if you bring it up, it doesn't, it, since it has it in the database, it can just display those items, and then if you click on them, then it runs out to the web and gets it. Or if you hit refresh, then it asks for the RSS feed. Now, one thing about an RSS feed, I think you can configure it like how many entries that you want. So, for example, um, it would be possible that, um, you know, let's say, for example, your RSS feed is configured to have uh, 20 entries in it, you know, and let's say you post it daily. You know, here it is December 1st, it would have today and going back, you know, 19 days, or that's not December 1st, it's what, December 4th. It would have four days in December and 16 days in November. All right. Tomorrow, if you came back, all right, if you started off with the fresh RSS feed, you'd lose that first entry in November that you had stored because it's only given you 20. Whereas, if you store it in the database, you still have the link to it. You still have the title of it and the link, and you could go back. So, I would think that would be the reasons for it, is the database is just going to build, whereas the RSS feed, I think, is showing you a window of X number of things. And plus, just the timing, you know. Um, th there's no real reason to refresh that every single time. You know, just refresh it when you think. Maybe when you open it up, you could do a refresh, and maybe let the person refresh it. Uh, when they want to, to run out and do that. I was originally thinking that, that that would untether you, but that would untether you as far as seeing the list of, 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 of titles, but that wouldn't untether you, because if you clicked on it, it's still going to run out and try to grab the URL. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you have other questions? I did, uh, I, I did see your uh, mini project. I thought that was pretty cool. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, I finally got it. Right. Yeah, right. There, was, there was a lot more things I'd like to do. Right. A lot more searches. Sort of 90, 95% of the way I had to do Right. Right. Well, I'm, you know. As far as just general software design principles, I'm definitely a fan of the, um, you know, quick prototyping, pick out something that is going to be very useful, implement that, and then over time extend it if it needs to be, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, I, I think, you know, the, 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 the previous style of software design where you tried to dream up the perfect application, I, 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 I don't know. I don't see that. It does depend on what you're doing. Yeah, I, yeah, I will say there are different rules for different kinds of applications. Uh, a lot of these mobile things and a lot of the web things, I have a feeling, are, are tend to be more of that kind of 
you know, continual improvement, um, you know. Um, for, well, as I say, not with mobile so much, but with mobile, yeah, you can, you can push automatic updates. So, I would say you, you don't have the deployment issue of having like a lot of uh, updates that you would have in like, you know, package software or whatever, you know, where, whereas um, those, there's an issue of getting, getting your changes out to the world. But with mobile, you can, you, you know, if people choose, they can automatically update it. If not even, their mobile phone will tell them that it needs updated or that there's an update available, provided they look, of course, all right? And then with web, that's not an issue because all you have is a browser and doing that. Um, really, it, it is interesting because, you know, the one thing that we, you know, everything we did in this class was really focused on developing, like, an app. Um, it becomes a lot more involved when you start considering how that's going to fit in like with the rest of the organization's IT, you know, and especially like, you know, how will it fit in, you know, we talked a little bit, we touched a little bit with PhoneGap of how that versus a mobile website could potentially connect or have synergy and, um, you know, by developing sort of a service-based uh, architecture where, um, UI things are asking services for data, uh, I think uh, allows you to, to leverage stuff so that you're not rewriting stuff over and over and over again. You know, you have one place that you're asking for this kind of data or that kind of data, and that will then populate, um, you know, different UIs, whether it be a web UI or a, uh, a mobile or, you know, even a desktop app. Right. 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 All right. Um, our final actually is Tuesday of next week, so a week from today. And it'll be 6 to 8 in BU 202, which is upstairs. All right. Questions? Final will be like a quiz. It's not meant to be intimidating or, or horrible, but it's, it's like a, like the quiz. All right. All right. Well, that's all I had for today. Okay. All right. Thank you.